And joining us now, Ambassador Mark Regev, senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He previously served as Israel's ambassador to the United Kingdom. Ambassador, thank you for your time. So what is the status yes, at this hour of the operation inside that hospital? It's still ongoing, and so I can't give you a, a more specific uh, information, and I apologize. Uh, I can tell you so far inside the hospital, there have not been firefights between uh, our forces and the terrorists. We have discovered uh, uh, um, weapons and other things. We entered the hospital on the basis of actionable intelligence. Hamas, as you know, and as has been announced by the administration in Washington, by the White House and the Pentagon, Hamas uses the hospital uh, as, a, as a shield for its military machine. And what we're trying to do is deal with those Hamas targets and, and safeguard, of course, the civilians who are using the hospital. And, and we're trying to, once again, differentiate between our enemy, Hamas, and between the civil, civilian population, who ultimately, uh, we bear them no, 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 no grudge. Yeah, and I mean, the fact is that Hamas is not wearing a uniform. So when you go into a hospital, which, according to the Pentagon and to you, uh, that is utilized the hospital where they have weapons stored and that there is actually a command and control center underneath that hospital. My question is, how do you differentiate between the civilians that are in that hospital, the doctors, the people that have gone there to seek some kind of protection, and then Hamas that is not wearing a uniform that is possibly among the people? Well, it's difficult, and it requires good intelligence, and, and it requires a professional army. And thank goodness we've got both good intelligence and we've got a very highly trained uh, military. Uh, obviously, sometimes it's simple. If you see a baby, you know a baby's not a terrorist. Uh, if you see a doctor who, who acts like a doctor, you presume he's a doctor. But you're right, it's, it can be very difficult. And this is what Hamas has done. It's a war crime. Uh, the, the, the international law is very, very clear. You can't use a, a, a hospital for a cover for your military machine. That's in the protocol of the Geneva Convention, which is which is accepted, I think, internationally as the basis for the rules of war. What they've done is a crime. They have shielded their military terror machine under a hospital deliberately. And unfortunately, it's not just the Shifa hospital. At hospitals throughout the northern Gaza Strip, we found tunnels. We've seen evidence of Hamas using hospitals to shield its terror machine. It's, it's abominable behavior. It has to be condemned. We're dealing with it once again as, as surgically as we can, trying to reach out and, and, and find the enemy and at the same time safeguard those who are civilians. Ambassador, is there a uh, commitment that there will be the possibility of independent observers to go in and witness what is or is not happening inside that hospital? I understand that we're embedding journalists with our forces. Obviously, in a uh, dangerous combat situation, there can be reservations about that. But uh, we, we are eager to show the world evidence, uh, uh, photographic evidence, that we know for a fact and has been confirmed by the Americans, by the administration, that Hamas has used these facilities for its war machine. But can I tell you, if, if, if this is supposed to be secret, it, it's not really. It's the worst kept secret in all of Gaza City. I think all the Gazans who live in that part of the Gaza Strip know for a fact that Hamas has these underground uh, uh, military facilities uh, underneath and around the hospital. Uh, they all know it. I mean, and, and I, I think some of those tunnels may have initially been built by Israel in the 1980s. Of course, those tunnels may have been expanded since then. I think it's more that Israel helped build a basement to the hospital as part of when we helped refurnish the hospital and we used the basement for storage and so forth. I think Hamas built onto that a network of tunnels leading to bunkers, leading to arms depots, leading to rocket uh, launch sites, and the main command and control of Hamas's military in that area is directly under the hospital. And, and we have to deal with that military machine. We have to, ultimately, we have to destroy it. And uh, we will. And we're going to do so in a way where we do minimum damage to the civilian hospital and minim, minimum harm to civilians. That's our challenge. And Ambassador, are these military operations in some way holding up or putting a pause on a, a hostage deal that Israel could be getting? I think it's, it's the opposite, uh, that by putting pressure on Hamas, 
uh, we're expediting uh, the release of hostages. That's our belief. That's our hope. That's our understanding of the situation. Look, Hamas is holding almost 240 people, of them 32 children. And of the children, they're, they're holding uh, a baby. I think he's nine, ten months old. They're holding toddlers, three, four years old. I mean, normal people don't, don't kidnap babies and children. We're dealing with a particularly gruesome and brutal enemy. And uh, we have what no is, illusions about Hamas. And they're not going to release hostages your... because, because they've suddenly become humanitarian. They're going to, only going to release hostages if they're facing enormous pressure. And we are applying that pressure today. Ambassador, what is your message to the families of the hostages that await just some resolution? So we can only imagine the pain they're going through. You know, it's, it's 40 days now since, since their loved ones were abducted. And, and for most of them, we haven't had a sign of life. So our message is we're doing everything we can to bring about the release of, of hostages. That's our goal. It's an integral part of our military operation. And we believe, and we'll see this in the next few days, uh, by applying and increasing the pressure on Hamas, and that's what the Israeli Defense Forces are doing. We're beefing up the pressure on Hamas. If that can bring about an, a movement on, on, the, on the hostage issue, we hope and pray that that's the case.